Stocks and bonds have rallied globally this morning on more indications from the Fed it won't have to raise rates again to control inflation. Reports of fresh stimulus in China and lower expectations for US rates boosted the commodity-sensitive Aussie and Kiwi dollars to multi-week highs. It's coming up in our five things in five minutes. And then in our bonus deep dive interview, ANZ's Crystal Tan explains why higher oil prices for longer will hit some economies more than others. If we see a period of high oil prices, that's going to raise Asian economies' import bills, weaken their trade balances, and also contribute to inflationary pressures at a time when headline inflation has remained elevated by past standards in most of the region's economies, and several are also facing upward pressure from a weather-related rise in food prices. But first, in 5 and 5 with ANZ, number one, bond markets and stock markets have rallied sharply overnight on more talk from Fed officials about how the sharp rise in bond yields in recent months is going to do the Fed's heavy lifting for it, which means it's unlikely to have to hike again later this year. The US 10-year Treasury yield fell as much as 19 basis points to 4.61%. Remember last week, it got to almost 4.9%. That's as US markets opened after the Columbus Day holiday. The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are up around 0.6% in late New York trade, and the Eurostox 600 actually closed up 2% overnight. Number two, that fall in US market interest rates has dragged down the US dollar, especially against the commodity-sensitive Aussie and Kiwi dollars. They're also getting some help from a report in Bloomberg overnight that China's policymakers are considering borrowing 1 trillion yuan, that's 137 billion US dollars, for an extensive infrastructure stimulus program. The Aussie dollar rose to a two-week high of 64.33 US cents overnight. It had been under 64 in late Asian trade. The Kiwi dollar firmed to a two-month high of 60.41 US cents from just under 60 US cents in late Asian trade. Number three, ANZ's head of G3 Economics, Brian Martin, writes from London this morning that comments from Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank President Raphael Bostic helped drive the rally on bond and stock markets overnight. Bostic said in a speech, quote, I actually don't think we need to increase rates anymore, end quote, to get inflation down to 2%. And he said this could be done without having a recession. Brian wrote, also an NFIB survey of US small business confidence fitted well with Bostick's comments. The NFIB index fell 0.5 points in September. That was more of a fall than the market expected and well below the 20-year average. Brian also points out small businesses in the US employ about 48% of workers. Number four, we've got results in September from Australia's NAB Business Confidence Survey, showing cost and price pressures at their weakest since 2021. ANZ Senior Economist for Australia, Adelaide Timbrell, explains the implications. This could be supporting evidence for a pause uh, in the Reserve Bank's November meeting. Labor cost growth decelerated from 3.2% quarter on quarter in August to 2% in September, the lowest rate since November 2021. And then when we look at the growth in prices of final products and retail prices, they were also near lows since 2021. Businesses are otherwise looking robust with most sub-index results uh, about business conditions above their long-term average, including capacity utilisation, which fell 0.9 percentage points, but at 84.2% was still elevated. Number five, AMZ's Roy Morgan weekly survey of consumer confidence in Australia showed its strongest results since February yesterday. Here's Adelaide Timbrell again. This was due to an increase in confidence around the future of the economy, as well as an increase in confidence around personal finances. We also have seen inflation expectations falling a touch, even with some of the fuel price volatility we've seen in recent weeks. Um, Consumer confidence of those paying off their homes in particular is rising, uh, though some of the increase in confidence lately is due to uh, the question on current finances, which compares household finances 
expenses to a year ago, the longer we have higher inflation and rates, the less different a year ago becomes. Adelaide Timbrell there. Now, in our bonus deep dive interview, my colleague Catherine Dyer spoke to ANZ's economist for Asia, Crystal Tan, about how sustained high oil prices will affect Southeast Asian countries more than others. Global oil prices have been very volatile of late, but our house view is for oil prices to reach $100 per barrel by the end of this year and then stay elevated going into 2024 amid persistent supply constraints. And recent developments in the Middle East over the weekend are only going to add to supply-side constraints. And what makes the region particularly vulnerable to an extended period of high oil prices like that? Well, many Asian economies are very heavily relying on oil imports to meet their energy needs. So this lack of domestic supply options leaves them exposed to the volatility of global oil markets. So if we see a period of high oil prices, that's going to raise Asian economies' import bills, weaken their trade balances, and also contribute to inflationary pressures at a time when headline inflation has remained elevated by past standards in most of the region's economies, and several are also facing upward pressure from a weather-related rise in food prices. So what are the things or what are the settings that govern the pass-through effect of oil prices through to inflation rates? Yes, it would depend on the complex interplay of factors that can vary significantly from one economy to another. So that's going to lead to different levels of sensitivity to oil price fluctuations. So one factor would be the inflation basket composition. So if energy-related components like gasoline, diesel, electricity have a very significant weight in the CPI basket, then changes in global oil prices should have a more direct and pronounced on inflation in those economies or else equal. Uh, the fuel price structure is also going to matter. Some economies have more flexible pricing mechanisms where domestic fuel prices are adjusted frequently. So those economies are also going to be more likely to experience a quicker pass-through effect but policy intervention can dampen any pass-through effect. So if there are fewer subsidies or price caps in place, those are going to insulate consumers from immediate price increases, but with other costs. So having analysed all of these different influences, what, what did you find to be the inflationary impact of extended high oil prices for some of the key economies in the region? Well, the transmission to inflation is going to be faster in economies where palm prices have been allowed to adjust. So the Philippines, Singapore, Korea, Taiwan and Thailand belong to this camp. Uh, in fact, the increase in gasoline prices have been the most prominent in the Philippines and South Korea. And the rise has been relatively slow in Taiwan because there the state-owned petroleum company is absorbing part of the increase as part of the government's price stabilisation policy. And on the other hand, we have India, Indonesia and Malaysia that have had kept a tight rein on palm prices. So, Crystal, what is the bottom line for the region? Well, if we're going to see a sustained supply-side-driven rise in global oil prices, that's going to be a headwind for most of Asia's economies. So renewed inflation pressures is going to be a key concern. The transmission to domestic inflation is expected to be swifter in the Philippines, Singapore, Taiwan, South Korea, and possibly also Malaysia if the government shifts towards a more targeted fuel subsidy regime. So there will be pressure on the external front too, but I think there at least there appears to be some capacity to absorb the rise in oil prices for the majority either in the form of large current account surpluses like in Singapore and Taiwan, or mitigants, as we discussed earlier, in Thailand, Korea and India. ANZ's Crystal Tan there. I'm Bernard Hickey. That was 5 and 5 with ANZ for Wednesday, October the 11th. Catch you tomorrow morning with a preview of key US inflation figures for September. This podcast contains general information only, not investment advice. You should obtain advice for your personal circumstances before making any investment decisions. Please view the podcast disclaimer available via your media player or email.